Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 12th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Pratt today explains what's behind some of the fake parking ticket notifications that you may have seen in your inbox. Now, most people probably won't click on it, but then again, hackers use these emails because they know there will be people that click on it. And well, what happens if you click on it? Uh, a downloader is installed after you enable the macro in the Word document that's included with the email. That downloader will then install the wall track a backdoor this is sort of more traditional a backdoor it's not crypto ransomware of course that could always come later it gives an attacker control over your system it does lower security settings in particular in an explorer disables your anti-malware and also steals information from your system like passwords as usual, Pratt is sharing all the indicators of compromise, including full packet captures. So take a look and go hunting and see if you find any copies of this that a user clicked on in your environment. Personally, I find that anti-spam does a reasonable good job in getting rid of a lot of these emails. But then again, there are always some slipping through. And one threat that you really shouldn't disregard is people checking personal email accounts from work, like webmail accounts. And then of course, they bypass a lot of the protections that you put into your mail servers with anti-spam and anti-malware. And when I'm talking about SSL and how to configure it correctly, usually I remind people that while you should not enable things like SSL version three, probably a much larger risk is certificate authorities not appropriately checking who is actually asking for the certificate. And we had yet another case, this time it's GoDaddy. GoDaddy had to revoke over 6,000 certificates, or at least they're saying over 6,100 customers were affected by this because due to a bug in GoDaddy's website, the certificate signing requests were not validated correctly. Of course, this doesn't mean that we had 6,100 malicious certificates issued, but just uh, domain name ver verification wasn't done correctly for uh, these certificates. So it's possible that some malicious certificates slipped through, which is why GoDaddy revoked these certificates. These certificates should have been revoked yesterday on January 10th. Of course, there's a major pain for the customers that obtained one of these certificates because they now have to get new certificates and install them on their systems. Now, we are tracking some of these certificate revocations on our sites. We are actually pulling the certificate revocation lists regularly. And it looks like there was a pretty decent spike about a week ago with sort of 1700 certificates being revoked on a particular day. The timing doesn't really match with what GoDaddy here says. So these are probably not directly related to GoDaddy. Now, one way how service providers are sometimes trying to sort of avoid the one password fits all problem for devices is that they have passwords that change once a day and that are, of course, relatively hard to guess. Well, this works pretty well, actually, if that list of passwords remains secret. However, one of these lists was just leaked via a vendor's LinkedIn account, apparently, and it does appear here to apply to at least some Jiang Mei with DVRs that have also been associated with things like Mirai with some of the default passwords used there. Now, not 100% clear which models are actually affected by this. The list does reference XMI, which is a cloud service being offered for uh, these uh, DVRs. So it could possibly be some kind of support remote access for DVRs that are connected to this cloud service. As usual, if you have any devices like this, uh, please do not allow remote access via the internet to the device. You never really know what hidden passwords are set up for the device that you just can't change because you don't know that they actually exist. And of course, expect bots like Mirai to incorporate that list in future versions. 
And yes, autofill in browsers is in the news again. This time it's mostly affecting password managers like LastPass and the like. And the problem here is that if a user decides to autofill a form on a site, the password manager will actually fill in all form fields, not just the ones that are necessarily visible to the user. So it's possible that an attacker has hidden form fields on the page and with that extracting more information from the user than the user is willing to provide. So in short, be careful how you use this feature. This of course cannot be used to extract a password for other sites. It will only send the password for the site to which you're currently connected with your browser. One thing I don't really like about uh, this particular release is that uh, the discover here calls it phishing. It's not really phishing in my opinion if you're sort of leaking additional data and it's not credentials for other sites into a form. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.